This is Batao Guru Michael Hiron of the original Hiron Escrima International. Love this art uh, from my father, the uh, Grandmaster Leo Hiron. Um, basically, the art was shown to me, but I didn't know it was being shown to me. As you grow up as a child, uh, little certain things that people do. Uh, the way you don't do it this way, do it this way. And then I didn't realize the seed was being planted. Okay. So after a while, uh, it became a formal organization and a formal teaching that I learned from my dad. And graduated, of course, and then an instructorship came later. And the vehicle to make this happen is the organization that I built was the original Hero and Screamer Federation. And that is nothing about without modifications, the original, the core, the reference of what my dad has taught me, what my dad has battle tested, what my dad has proven that it can save a life, especially his own, or else I wouldn't be here talking today. So, there. Okay, it's gonna pass. Comes two. There's your parry. I didn't really know dad do anything about Filipino martial arts till I was approximately 19 years old. And the reason behind that is uh, the Filipinos after World War II wanted to forget all the horrific things they did and actually my dad was quite ashamed of uh, what he did in World War II because uh, a life is precious and uh, when you take lives, uh, even, even though it's under orders by military, it, it still doesn't settle with your heart. In, uh, in the aftermath of World War II, um, there was no World War II syndrome where it was considered a disease and could be taken care of. So there were nights of screaming and hollering and talking loud. And uh, uh, I didn't know that till after the Vietnam syndrome that my dad was going through all these horrific dreams. And uh, he blames himself for the things that uh, he did in the war. At times when I would visit him at night, and uh, or I visit him and we got to be nighttime and uh, he says, um, Michael, he says, uh, stay, stay, stay until I, uh, I fall asleep. And I said, well, why that? He goes, because they're going to come visit me. I said, well, who's going to come visit you? And he says, oh, sometimes there's eight, there's sometimes there's ten, and they all stand around my bed and they ask me to come with them. And I think these were the demons that uh, represent everything that he had built up into his mind of, of all the horrific things that took place in World War II. So, uh, in the house, there was no guns, there was no uh, bolo knives, uh, there was nothing that would indicate that you were an aggressive type of warrior or, or anything that would reflect. He wanted to forget all that and just raise his family with the so-called white picket fence in the house and raise a family and the family prospers. Three. Four. Something happened in the where a bunch of nurses got attacked and by one man and my dad couldn't understand why they couldn't surround him and, and, and just put him down. But they all died. I think what hurt him most was uh, some of them were Filipino nurses. Okay, so that kind of hits home for him. And uh, he decided to bring the art out in uh, 1966 uh, in Tracy, California. Dad moved to Stockton and started, he continues to be with his club. And uh, I was going in the military, so I'm now 19 years old. Okay, as I went into the military and I, and I did my, uh, my uh, three and a half years in the United States Air Force, I came out and I knew sooner or later I'm going to have to learn my father's art. It's just a thing a son has to do. And, but I wasn't going to do it until I was 110% committed. And when that time came around, which is the mid 70s, is when I started seriously training. Now, today, the art, as I see it through my father's eyes, is I'm doing this original Hero in the Scream of Federation for one reason and one reason only. And that's to preserve and perpetuate the core, the reference of what my dad has given to me. That's all I'm doing with this organization. There's other organizations within Bahalana 
that are also perpetuating the art and, 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 and modifying it and going through these other steps. And that's fine. And, and, and I want to thank them for contributing to the legacy of my father. But without stepping on anybody's toes, what I do as the core and the reference of what my dad gave me is what kept him alive. But there's certain aspects that dad, my dad has given me that I now want to present and share uh, to the public, and that's what I teach, and that's the only reason why I teach. <laughs> The future of, to me, in this art is, is real simple. It's the students. I want to take this gift and give it to the students and make them perpetuate and propagate this art or call it what you like to the point where it maintains the same level and it, it brings out, it extracts certain things out of a student to make them a better person in this life. So this group, this, this vehicle to make this happen, this original here on the Scrimmage Federation, I hope people will embrace it and go forward with it. The path has already been laid out. The curriculum's been really laid out. The only thing different between where I'm going with this and where my dad went with this is my dad is my dad and I am myself. Unfortunately, my father's not with us today and people look at me as if I am him. Yes, there is the same bloodlines, but I have my own persona. So the way I present it, within the reference of the core curriculum, might be presented a little bit differently, but the end result will be the same. Uniqueness always has to do with application. You can learn it, but if you don't know how to apply it, then you're not learning it. So I think the application of what we teach our students and how we teach our students makes it definitive on how we are somewhat separate than others' thoughts. So if you reach deep into this art, and if you reach deep into any martial art, it's not about learning how to fight. It's learning how not to fight and the reason why you shouldn't have to fight. You should be able to protect yourself and your family, and that's fine and dandy. But you need to weigh the scales because you're going to be responsible for the results. And the results is not always pretty as things start out. The uniqueness about the Hiron system is the simplicity of it to get to your objective. You don't need to do any fancy stuff, any twirling, any miraculous, any, any television type stuff that you would see. It's straight into the point with the minimum amount of effort and to obtain the maximum amount of impact. So the uniqueness about it, and uh, I think uh, this will be the ace of, in the hole, is our large amount of system. When you use Largo Mano system, there's no more left hand checking because you're too far. If you have the room to use Largo, it cannot be beat. FMA in the future, it's not going to stop. It can't stop. It's here, it's always been here. Now it's been extracted from the old timers, if I may say, and now it's in the public. The other martial arts of today, They've come a long way. We have a, a little ways to go. But I think because of our culture and our pride that we don't want to give everybody everything. So we tend to hold it back saying that's ours. That's ours as a Filipino. And uh, some instructors, they don't want to, uh, uh, how would they say, open the road up, open the door up to others that are, are, are not Filipino. And uh, my dad had students from different cultures, from different races. And I think if they can get over that barrier for one, it will expand even more. Um, if people can concentrate on their systems, 
and uh, throughout the personalities and throughout the politics, it's got no choice but to progress. When students come into uh, our organization to want to learn uh, Eskrima, we do tell them we do check report cards because they, the brain is the most powerful weapon any person can have. And I, I, we want to make that a priority. Swinging a stick is one thing, but your brain, that's, that's what makes you go forward progress. Uh, the, the family unit, the, the, the culture, the respect, uh, learning the customs, is, is, those also have to be intact. It's part of preserving our heritage. So, if the student, and I tell the student right away, if they don't conform to what their parents are telling them to do, or if they're failing in the report cards, then they need to settle that first before they can be a part of this organization. So therefore, the philosophy of what we teach in this organization is, we teach all the students equally, but we train them individually because there's different personas, different physical attributes, and we have to show them how to adapt it because they're limited in certain areas. That doesn't mean you can't do this or you have to stop, but you find a different avenue to reach the goal, adapting to the student. So basically, when you end up learning something in the, in the original Hurun Shrima organization, it becomes your own personal. But all I ask is when you go forward with what I give you as it was given to me, don't forget where it came from. That's why it's important to me to maintain the core and the reference of the Euro system. If, if anybody is interested in uh, learning this art, um, there is a website. Uh, it's uh, originalheroinescrema.com or you can email me at uh, michael.geron at sbcglobal.net or if you have the inclination to spend all this money for phone calls, you can give me a call at uh, area code 707-853-2477. And I won't give you my address because uh, I have my private life too.